one. McDougal comes in, shot just missed on the short side. Pause. Chops it back behind the goal. Romanock shooter looks to center. He and O'Donnell get tangled up. They push and shove in the near corner. McDougal slips by Melanson behind the Emmerich's goal in front of Haas. Shot scores! Haas! David Haas with a feed from Gatto. And the Oilers up 1 0 early on. 18 18 into this game. Or rather, 1 42 into this game, and the fans are on their feet. Well, just prior to that, Paul, there was a two on one situation with a shooter going down the right boards. And then Bill McDougall had the puck, and all of a sudden the passing lane closed off, and Bill did the right thing when he shot, but he missed the corner. And then they persisted, they get in on top of the puck, McDougall got it back, played around with it behind the net, threw it out, and then David Haas scored. That's a big goal for the Oilers, and it sets the pace for the rest of the game. Trying to feed it to Rice, but it bounced off the defenseman, and it ends up behind all of Golzig, and it's 2 nothing. Well, you know, Paul, he really made a mistake in center Rice. Uh, Stephen Rice was wide open. He was trying to get his legs. Dan Curry, he didn't give him the puck. As it ended up, as it ended up, he, he ended up held on to the puck too long, got into the end zone. There was a still a two-on-one situation, so now he didn't have the time to make the pass. He takes a good shot. Gets a rebound and he scores. That's a big goal for the Oilers. A very, very big goal. So the Oilers now with a 2-0 lead in Rochester. As I said, the first 10 minutes will be crucial, and so far it is not good for them. And this could be a big time problem for John Van Boxmeer's Rochester Americans. He has a young hockey club. And now a lobster has been tossed onto the ice. We've had a few mark moving up on the play. McDougal inside the Rochester line, now working in the middle, right circle shot, calls it the save. McDougal with a quick shot looking for the five hole. Almost found it. Haas now has it. Haas in front to walk. Shoot a shot. Scores! Oilers are just all over the Amherst. And this, folks, I'll tell you what. The fat lady is not singing yet. I know it's only early, but I'm going to tell you, she is definitely getting tuned up because this team is on a mission, and they're not going to be stopped. It doesn't seem like it. No, Paul, it's, it's very obvious they're not going to be stopped. And uh, number one, uh, once again, Bill McDougall was in the corner. He won the battle along the boards. He took his man out. And he's, a Rochester defenseman couldn't hang on to him. He got the puck. He threw it out. It came to Haas. And then all of a sudden, Haas made a, a complete, he made a 180-degree turn. And then he threw it out to Ashuda. And Ashuda made no mistake and put it in the left corner. I mean, that's a big, big play for the Oilers. And, uh, Get towards Haas, but Melanson is there. Team's now skating, four skaters aside. Melanson lugs it inside the order line. Long shot. That was a knuckler. It may have hit Herbert's stick, and Cowley has his mask knocked off by Rubichuk, and Herbert's is going to go over to talk to him. And Cowley hangs on to the puck, and now Rubichuk and Herbert's. <laughs> and Lance Roberts is getting it from the Oilers and the fans. 121 left to go in the minor to Frawley. 145 in Ben Allen's. That is the difference, and the Amherst will have that as. A power play, and, uh, and the fans chanting Cowley, Cowley, and we'll take a look at it here. We have the luxury of a, oh, Rubicek went in and just reached down and pulled the mask off of Cowley. And won. Once again, behind the net, this time it's Frawley. McDougal checks him, but it's taken by Herbers, and it's bounced near the line. Brown keeps it in at the left point. Team's back at even strength, five on five. Now moving it ahead, McDougall has Haas, Haas and a break. David Haas out alone against Kolzik, shot, scores! <laughs> David Haas. And how often, Paul, how often have we seen this happen throughout these entire Collar Cup Finals? Every time something happens or they get close, the Oilers always manage to come back. Here's a breakaway goal. And that's great. That's what I'm saying about an offensive hockey club. They give you lots of opportunities. And David Haas made no mistake on that. He went wide, he pulled it back, and he went back into the five hole. Believe me, that's the turnaround point of this game for the Oilers.
just 44 seconds. On, in that boat, on, on that boat, in it, and on, under it. <clears throat> and Rubichuk finds him in it here. The Oilers with a man advantage. They have 36 seconds with to work, or which to work. And now Haas in the lead pass coming near the goal. Couldn't get the shot away. Kolzik way out of his net. Now he'll move back into the crease. Haas to big Romanuk Shuda. Brown trying to take him under the play. Shuda goes down. McDougal back to the point where Renka did a beautiful job of keeping it in. In front to Haas, he scores! Oh, baby, David Haas with the hat trick. And what a play by Warenka at the blue line. Well, Paul, you know, we try to teach young hockey players all the time when the puck is bouncing and it comes to the blue line, you use your hand, you bend over, you use your hand, you catch the, 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 the puck, and then you drop it in front of you. And Brett Warenka did just that. He caught the puck, the puck was bouncing, he dropped it on the blue line, he threw a nice easy pass, a nice, he feathered the pass over to David Haas, and David Haas scored his third goal, and this is what I was saying about the power of this hockey club. You just can't shut down any one guy, somebody else always seems to come to the forefront. will control that's Rubichuk behind his goal 11 24 to go now in the third period Rubichuk couldn't find anybody to give it to and he'll send it down the ice much to the disgruntle they're down near the Oilers players bench and Roy after that fifth goal what is the mood of the crowd at the moment well the mood is that everybody's getting ready to celebrate and I just noticed they brought over a table and it's all draped and ready to go and I would imagine in just a few minutes from now the Calder Cup is going to arrive Rod Hinks back for the Emmerich shot right on goal and Cowley stacks up the pads. We'll get to rule things, but the shoe in and the only sad part about that is not that Bill McDougall doesn't deserve it, but Wayne Cowley has had a tremendous playoffs also. I mean, he only he only lost two games. He's played very well against St. John's. He's played very well against uh, Fredericton, and uh, but I really feel that Bill McDougall is the MVP. Shot up towards the right side. That's Podine could not reach it. The Emmerich send it back in. Now it's controlled at center ice by Peter White. White, oh, he drilled one off of Snell. He control over it. It's happened a lot of times in the game of hockey. So we're approaching the midway point here of the third period. The Oilers have the lead at five to two. It's played back inside their zone. Now at the line, Savaglia couldn't catch it. And now Thornton, a lead pass to Podine, right side. Podine moving into the front of the goal. Shot, kicked away by Kozik. Rebound, they score! Scott Thornton finally has broken the ice. And there's nobody more relieved than Scotty Thornton. And it is six to two now for the Oilers. And folks, let the party begin here at center 200. The bench has just erupted. And they pretty well now can sense it. And I can't believe it. Scott got a goal. I'm so happy for him. He had just struggled through these playoffs, wondering when it was going to happen. And he got one here. Well, you know what, Paul? I saw something here. When I Scott Thornton scored that goal, I saw Bill McDougall and Dan Curry put their arms up in the air, and Bill McDougall and Dan Curry actually danced on the bench. They were up and down, up and down, up and down. And you talk about chemistry, that's what makes chemistry, is togetherness. So Thornton from Podine is first of the playoffs. Oh, blocked by Cowley. Rebound Haas, he'll play it outside the zone, and Romanock Shuda has a beat on it. Coles, it comes out. He'll clear it away right to Akshuda. He scores! Roman Akshuda. Oh, Olaf Kozik, what a play that was. He'd love to have that one back. And the road is on. The Oilers now lead it 7-2. Akshuda with a shorthanded goal. And folks, wherever you are in Cape Breton, if you're listening, put the champagne out, get it ready to go, because we can start celebrating. Oilers now leading at 7-2. to Well, did you ever doubt, Paul, that this would happen? I mean, after all, when have you ever seen me in a white tux and a bow tie? <laughs> I mean, right. I knew this was going to happen, and that's why I dressed the part. Amazing. The Oilers now, as John Van Boxmere will take a timeout, and the fans are on their feet, I guess. The goal, the Oilers have tied another American.